Welcome back, everybody. She is a star of the Democratic Party whose get out the vote efforts have transformed the state of Georgia. Please welcome back to A Late Show, Stacey Abrams. Thanks so much for being here. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me back. Well, you have been working tirelessly uh, for the Democratic Party to succeed, to, uh, to have victory in the state of Georgia. Are you allowing yourself time to celebrate right now, or is there too much work to be done? I had about 17 minutes on Saturday afternoon. I'm good. <laughs> That's, That's all you need? Now I get back to work. Okay. Well, we've got to, we've got to win two Senate races. I, I can't dawdle too long. Now, I, I want to get to that in just a moment, but, I, but I'm going to dwell on this for just a moment more, if you don't mind, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Biden is set to become the first Democratic presidential candidate to win Georgia since 1992. You're being credited with your get-out-the-vote effort, your organizing of Georgia. How did you do it? So I, I want to make certain we give credit to so many groups that have been working at this for a very long time. My part was that when I became Democratic leader in 2010, I started building an infrastructure to focus on registration, on recruiting and training staff, on making certain we were in every single county. And I advanced that through multiple cycles. In 2018, I finally had enough money to do all the things we dreamed of. I raised $40 million for my, my gubernatorial race, and we kept raising money after I lost to keep focusing on keeping this infrastructure in place. We worked with other organizations. We helped seed some of those groups, including the New Georgia Project, which I founded, Fair Fight and Fair Count. And we had, you know, million, you know, two million voters who understood that their voices were needed and they showed up. Well, I, I know that um, you were doing all this organizing and all these efforts along with these other groups long before you ran for governor. But, you know, one of the sort of hallmarks of that campaign was the obvious voter purges and voter suppression that were going on under then Secretary of State Kemp. And I imagine that must have given you even more um, um, energy for this effort than before. He was a galvanizing force for the intensity of my efforts this time, yes. <laughs> do, you think, do you think there are any Republicans on the national level now going, oh, would be better if she was just governor. Now we've lost the whole damn state. I, I had some time on my hands. If they'd let me have this other job, I probably would have been distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Idle hands or democracy's workshop. There now, you go. Um, it, have you seen the meme, some of the memes about you on on the internet? This is my favorite. I have, Please. let me see. No, no. This is my favorite. This is my favorite so far because I'm a Lord of the Rings fan. This is Ewan defeating the Witch King of Angmar in the Lord of the Rings. There he goes. It's, it's, <laughs> you fool, no man can flip me. I am no man. No man. <laughs> well, so Clinton, I, won, is it 92? Did I have that right? Was the one time Clinton yes, won? Yes, yes. So it was the last time. 19. What is, what's different now um, is, what, 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 do you, what do you think is most different about Georgia now that they were ready to uh, give their electoral votes to a Democrat? So I, I worked on the 92 campaign as a college student. And at the time, every statewide office was held by a Democrat with the exception of one. And then we lost a Senate seat. But Democrats controlled the state of Georgia for 130 years. By the time I joined the legislature in 2006, we had seen a demographic shift beginning, but we'd seen an ideolo ideological shift really cementing. And that's when conservatives really did control the state of Georgia. When I became leader in 2010, I put together a 21-page deck that I, I traveled the country going to see Democratic donors with. And my argument was, one, we had a demographic shift that was happening that we had to harness. Two, we had an inchoate message for 21st century Democrats that had to be refined. We had to know what we stood for. And three, we had to build an infrastructure that didn't rely on every single election, but really th sought to win no matter who was on the ticket. And so we built it from the ground up. We ran state ledge races, but we also invested in city council races and DA races all the way up to the presidential race. And I think the big difference was our ability to really maintain a consistent effort. So many groups have been doing this work for a long time, but it's feast or famine. When there's a candidate who wants to invest, you'll get the resources, and then you're just struggling to get by. And we were able to create a bit of sustainability in the infrastructure 
which meant we could win again and again and build up to this big victory in November. What did it feel like when it started to look like, it, when it became clear that Georgia, there were enough votes out there that Georgia looked like it was going to swing over to uh, Biden's side? Can you talk me through that moment? Maybe, was it Friday morning? It was, it was actually Wednesday. We, we had a pretty good sense because we have an amazing data team. But Lauren Grow-Wargo, who has been my consigliere, my partner in this work, she and I were texting back and forth because we had the numbers that we thought were coming from the remaining counties. And it was that morning I called her and I said, this is the first time I've woken up in a November without curling into the fetal position first. And, and she was like, I know, I'm afraid. It feels like we're winning. I'm like, I know, but don't say it out loud. And, and you know, the numbers got bigger and bigger and we got happier and happier. Do you have anything to say out there to Democrats? Because I saw several think pieces this weekend where Democrats or just political writers saying like, the Democrats won, but did they really? Yeah, we really won. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there, is an, <laughs> there is an orange menace of putrescence who will no longer be able to occupy the White House. That's a big deal. There is the opportunity. <laughs> putrescence, I want to get that down. Okay, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> there is an incoming president who has moral leadership and character and who actually believes in science and facts. We have seen the change in the face of leadership by adding Kamala Harris so women of color can see themselves, women writ large and women of color in particular can see themselves in the highest positions in the land. And oh, did I mention Trump is leaving? That's a big win. We can get the rest of it done. Well, we have to take a quick break, uh, but stick around everybody. We'll be right back with more Stacey Abrams.